What is it about the book of Psalms um, that captures the imagination and, and makes it such a valuable book for Christians? Well, the Psalms is one of the most beloved books mm -hmm. of, um, of Christians. And even if they do not know much of the rest of the Bible, mm. the book of Psalms is something they know uh, something about. And a lot of their quotations, or a lot of their, their things that they have uh, memorized from the Bible will usually be from the Psalms. Mm. You know, the Lord is my shepherd. Right. I even remember an instant, an instance where I was, um, I was doing some uh, work in my other job, uh, monitoring a, a funeral for a gangster. Mm. And this gangster had never, ever, as far as I know, made any profession of faith or yeah. belief or anything like that. But even at his funeral, they, they recited Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. And I thought, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. A Psalm that, were, that was written uh, 3,000 years ago by David is being uh, recited at this gangster's, gangster's funeral. So we do seem to appreciate the book of Psalms, and it has been a great source of comfort and joy and um, uh, love for Christians, certainly, and for all sorts of people, both believers and unbelievers, mm -hmm. seem, to, seem to know something about the book of Psalms. So part of the, part of the answer to the question, why study the book of Psalms, may be just that, because, of course, it is... Uh, one of the most well-known books mm -hmm. in the in the Bible. Most of us know at least something about it. A lot of our songs come mm -hmm. from the book of Psalms. Right. And um, even if you haven't memorized the book of Psalms, you know it in terms of the songs and hymns mm -hmm. that you sing. <clears throat> Others might have a bit more a bit more academic reason for studying it, and that is they know, for example, it is the biggest book of the Bible, 150 chapters, and it is also the most quoted book mm -hmm. in the New Testament. Right. Over two-thirds of the New Testament quotations of the Old Testament are from the book of Psalms, mm -hmm. which is actually quite, quite surprising because the Psalms are quoted in the New Testament by the New Testament writers not just in the doxological sections of their writings, mm -hmm. which is where you might expect a book like the book of Psalms to be quoted, but also at the moments of intense um, uh, debate and theological argumentation. As for example, Paul will quote Psalm 69, I believe, at um, Romans 11. Right. And uh, uh, the Revelation and uh, um, uh, Jesus even, you know, mm. quotes it in debates. He quotes Psalm 110. Mm. Um, the Lord said to my Lord, said at my right hand, he says to the Pharisees, who is he talking about? Mm. At a very intense uh, debate. A debating point to make theological points. Right. And of course, the author of Hebrews uses the book of Psalms to make some Im very important theological, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the uh, theological points. So the book of Psalms is quoted all over the place for all sorts of reasons. So right. it is very important for us to study for those reasons. But I think there's another reason why we should pay a lot of attention to the book of Psalms these days, and that's precisely that, the days that we are currently living in. Mm -hmm. We are living in uh, what I would consider a post-post-Christian world, mm. where Christianity is no longer taken for granted right. by the culture outside. In fact, it is, um, it is now at the place where Christianity is seen as a threat to the continuance right. of a healthy culture. And uh, Christians are a danger to society. And, that, and as soon as you identify a danger to society, that mm. means you are free then to attack that mm. danger because what else are you supposed to do? If, if any danger is attacking a culture, then that danger needs to be attacked. And so I think in many ways, uh, the culture we're living in today, the secular um, unbelieving culture that, we that we are living in today has declared you know, basically open season on Christianity. Mm -hmm. And we see it from very uh, many surprising sources, including our own governments mm -hmm. that are turning against us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the persecution of Christians, especially in North America and so forth, is now, I think, becoming very common. Right. And I think uh, the martyrdom of Christians is not far away. Well, in that kind of a situation, the book of Psalms takes on immense relevance. Mm -hmm. Because the fact is that the psalmist, the writers of the psalms, lived in exactly that kind of a culture. Mm -hmm. And many of the psalms depict 
that kind of a situation where the psalmist is surrounded by enemies, mm. uh, those that want to bring him down, <clears throat> those that want to destroy him. And how he manages to maintain his faith and balance mm. and trust in God in those dire circumstances where he's been attacked on every side. And given that purpose of the book of Psalms and that reality of the book of Psalms, I think it is a tremendously important book that we study for our day. As Calvin said, Calvin, uh, I think, gave an incredibly important description of the book of Psalms. Mm. I, ha I have the quotation somewhere, maybe you can put it up for the people. Uh, but uh, the, the, the gist of it was the Psalms teach the Christian how to bear the cross. Mm. And that is exactly what the Psalms do. They teach us how to handle persecution, how to handle suffering, and how to bear our cross um, with courage, with faith, and not give up. Mm. So, the, so for all of those reasons, I think the Psalms are very important. You know, I used to have an image of David writing Psalms there he is, a, a, a youth sitting on this beautiful green mountainside mm. with the sheep skipping about, right. and he's on his harp, very pastoral, mm. peaceful, white clouds sailing across the Psalm sky. Psalm 23 type of mm. imagery. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that, uh, we'll see that that's, that's not the, exactly the correct imagery to read mm. by. But now, as I look at the Psalms, it is, it is a book that is filled with gun smoke. Mm. It is filled with violence. It is filled right. with injustice. It is, it is warfare. Mm. It is absolute warfare declared upon the faithful of God. Mm. And anybody that wants to remain faithful and trust in God is being brought down and is being hounded and brought down. And even Psalm 23, we should not forget that very important line. <clears throat> You, you prepare a table for me mm -hmm. in the presence of, of my enemies. enemies. Right. So even there, he is surrounded by his enemies, mm -hmm. and yet God is preparing a table for him. So those, those reasons make uh, the Psalms a very important book for us to study mm. today. It'll teach us how to bear the cross for Christ. Mm. Which invites the question, how should the church view the Psalms? How should the church use the Psalms? Um, there are similarities in our post-Christian -post culture, mm. as, as you call it, uh, to that of the different psalm writers, uh, mm. David being the main one. Um, but does the church use the psalms um, like Israel would have used the psalms in worship or warfare? What does the church's warfare look yeah. like yeah. Uh, specifically when we employ the Psalms? Okay. The best way to answer that question is to look a little bit at how the, uh, the Christian church has viewed the book of Psalms through history. And so I have a few quotations here that will take us through the history and bring us up to, up to snuff. Um, um, Alan Ross, for example, he will write Quote, this is, this is not an ancient writer, but this is a contemporary writer. It is impossible to, quote, he said, it is impossible to express adequately the value of the book of Psalms to the household of faith. Mm. For approximately 3,000 years, the Psalms have been the heart of the spiritual life of the people of God. End of quote. Bruce Walkie and James Houston, in their, in their book, The Psalms as Christian Worship, write, quote, no mortal man can fully declare the virtue of the Psalms. They're actually quoting... Uh, Alcuin, mm. Alcuin, a the, medieval uh, writer, the advisor to Emperor Charlemagne. Right. Yes, no mortal man can fully declare the virtue of the Psalms. And then uh, they add, that is, Houston and uh, Walkey add, quote, "We feel the same sentiment 1,200 years later." Mm. So throughout the history of the church, really until modern times, the Psalms were the chief source of spiritual comfort for the church. Mm. And of course, they also formed the basis of the church's worship as mm. well. It was the church's hymn book. This is what Augustine says in his Confessions. Quote, In what accents I address thee, my God, when I read the Psalms of David. Those beautiful songs, the language of devotion which banishes the spirit of pride. How I address thee in those Psalms. How my love for thee was kindled by them. How I burned to recite them. Were it possible throughout the world as an antidote for the pride of humanity, mm. end of quote. 
Martin Luther, uh, quote, you may rightly call the Psalter a Bible in miniature in which all things which are set forth more at length in the rest of the scriptures are collected into a beautiful manual of wonderful and attractive brevity, end of quote. So for him, the Psalms are a mini Bible. Hmm. John Calvin, quote, here the prophets themselves, seeing they are exhibited to us speaking to God and laying open all their inmost thoughts and affections, call or rather, or rather draw each of us to the examination of himself in particular, in order that none of the many infirmities to which we are subject and the many vices with which we abound may remain concealed. Mm. End of quote. In other words, the Psalms open us up. They expose us to the God with, with, with whom we have to do. Mm -hmm. And they lay bare our souls. And, th and that's what the psalmist is doing. He's laying bare uh, his soul before God. But I think the, 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 the most important thing that Calvin said, that's important, and uh, which I referred to earlier, and I'll quote him here now. Moreover, although the Psalms are replete with the prophets which serve to frame our life to every part of holiness, piety, and righteousness, yet they will principally teach and train us to bear the cross. Mm. And the bearing of the cross is a genuine proof of our obedience, since by doing this, we renounce the guidance of our own affections and submit ourselves entirely to God." End of quote. So as you can see, uh, the Psalms have been a source of spiritual nourishment and encouragement for the church throughout the ages. The second century uh, church father, Genedius, the patriarch of Constantinople, said this, he would not ordain anybody to be bishop who did not, who could not, memori who had not memorized the whole Psalter. Mm -hmm. That's how seriously they took it. And the Eighth Council of Toledo ordered that no one be promoted to any ecclesiastical office who did not perfectly know the entire collection. Now, why did the early church require, uh, this is even before, probably just before Constantine, but maybe even um, shortly after, why did they require the bishops and the leaders of the church know the book of Psalms? Well, very simple. They were probably going to get martyred. Mm. And so they needed to know how to die well mm. and how to bear the cross. In, the, in, uh, in their faithful witness to God. Mm. And the Psalms would teach them that. So you're not going to elevate somebody who's going to become a target uh, for persecution and who may end up denying the faith who did not know the Psalter. Mm. Because in their hour of trial, they would need the Psalms. Mm. 